Welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to Mysteries from Beyond the Other Dominion. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Lenroe, and today we're going to investigate hybrid black holes, tell you about the case of the hungry grave, ask if some dinos actually had tumors, and critique the 1961 sci-fi flick, Battle of the World, starring Claude Rains, and cover other intriguing subjects, time of course permitting. But first, hybrid black holes. Now, as I've mentioned before, a black hole is actually a star, a massive star, that has collapsed upon itself, and its gravity is so intense that no light can escape from it, rendering it black or dark. And technically, rather than a hole, it should be called a black sphere. Now, one idea is that black holes could serve as the entry and exit points for so-called wormhole passageways to other sectors of the cosmos where astronauts could travel in a short amount of time at superluminal speeds beyond the speed of light to investigate those other sectors of our cosmos. But of course, there's a major problem. Those black holes have their tremendous gravitational forces that could rip apart a spacecraft. However, a new hypothesis by Dr. Lior Burkle from the University of Utah argues that some black holes, if not all of them, are so-called hybrids that while they do have their annihilatory dark zones, there are also so-called safe zones or weak singularities within them. And if a spacecraft could chart those singularities and navigate through them, they could indeed reach the wormhole and travel to other sectors of the cosmos. Now, of course, there's still another problem. As that spacecraft approached the black hole, it would reach the event horizon or threshold where gravity would begin to tear it apart. However, there's a new discovery also that indicates this might not always be the case. Several young stars have been discovered recently in the vicinity of the black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy. I should point out that 10 or 15 years ago, astronomers, for the most part, did not even believe black holes existed. Now today, the consensus is that there's a black hole, a supermassive black hole, perhaps a million times the mass of our own sun, at the center of each and every galaxy in the cosmos. Now, regarding the one at the center of our galaxy, these young stars, which are about 10 million years old, which is young on the cosmological time scale, are not being ripped apart. Some are only one one hundredth of a light year from the core. One is a thousandth of a light year. Now, light year is the distance light travels in one year, about six trillion miles. That one star that is within one one thousandth of a light year is only six billion miles from the center. And I should point out, that would be about having a star just beyond Pluto in our own solar system. So it would be like having a second star orbiting our star, immensely close. The closest actual star to our uh, own star is Alpha Centauri at 4.2 light years away, or about 25 billion miles. So this star is very close to the black hole and is yet not being ripped apart. The reason, the theory, they believe that our black hole is in a dormant stage, that black holes may go through periodicities of intense gravitational attraction and then dormancy. So this dormant period may last for millions of years and hence would allow a spacecraft possibly to approach it and navigate through these so-called safe zones to the wormhole and travel to other vistas. Now you might ask, what type of ET could do that? Well, obviously we do not have the technological ability to do that today, but perhaps astrophysicists of tomorrow will be able to do so. But ETs on other planets that are thousands or hundreds of thousands of years older than we are might have developed the technology to exploit these black holes, these hybrid black holes, and go to other se sectors of the cosmos. Now you might ask, what type of scientist would have that type of technological ability? Well, one candidate is Rennick, ruler of the moon, as seen in the 1950 serial, Radar Men from the Moon. He's opposed by Commando Cody. Let's see Rennick in action right now. Roll tape. <laughs> Commando Cody. I am Rettig, ruler of the moon. 
Apparently, you are expecting me. Of course. For many years, our radio has kept us informed of events on Earth. And my men there have advised me of your every move. I see you have adopted our language. Yes. All our people are required to speak English. So we can operate more efficiently in your country. You mind telling me why your men are carrying out that campaign of destruction on Earth? Not at all. They are merely softening up your defenses for our impending invasion. Why do you want to invade the Earth? Because the atmosphere on the moon has become so thin and dry, it is impossible for us to raise food, except in pressurized greenhouses. And none of us can move outside without helmets. So we are planning a mass migration to your world. You will find that conquering the Earth isn't so simple. Ah, but it will be. Because of our atomic weapons, on the moon, we have an element, lunarium, which is far superior to uranium as a base for atomic reactions. And we can completely control the force of these reactions, enabling us to build atomic weapons ranging from huge cannons to these small ray pistols. Very considerate of you to give me all this information. You deserve some reward for your long journey, but unfortunately, I cannot permit you to return to Earth with it. Maybe I have something to say about that? Did you see that? Unbelievable! So for the effectiveness of your weapons. Now, I will demonstrate one of ours. example, the type of E.T. who might be able to capitalize on the hybrid nature of some black holes. Now, we just have a report from a Russian cosmologist that he believes advanced E.T.s are actually surviving in the centers of some black holes. How about that? Now, until next time, may the power of the cosmos and of the black hole be with you. Yes, yes, yes.